the Off Grid family. Today we're going to be making something that I've been fascinated with for a long time which is jamming certain signals. Now I'm going to be making a Wi-Fi jammer. Um, there are lots of legal um, things regarding this so make sure you check the law in your own country. I will only be using this on my own Wi-Fi signal and no one else's so I should be okay. But let's show you how to make it and what you need. Let's get on. A 2.4 gigahertz wireless transmitting module, an 18650 battery and battery clip, a toggle switch, an optional LED, a project case that will fit all of these items in, and a set of two female to female SMA jacks. If you want to make your own antennas, that's fine. I've made a video on how to do that, which you can click in the top right hand corner now to see how. If that is the case, then you do not need the SMA jacks and you can connect them directly to the transmitting modules. I will show you how to do that in a minute. When you get these transmitters, they're pretty bog standard, nothing on them, and there's very little advice on how to wire them up, what each one of these holes represents and so on. But I did a lot of research and I did find out eventually. Okay, so here are the transmitters with their power cables on them. And they've also got their jumpers on. The jumpers are just because they're cold. No, um, the jumpers are basically just a piece of wire that jumps from one place to another. And it's, for example, in a circuit you could have a jumper from A to B and that will make it do one thing. B to C and it will make it do something else. And in this situation it actually determines where um, which channel it's um, transmitting on. So, this one has none on it. This one has it from point the first to the second, this has it from the first to the third, and this has it from the first to the fourth. And that means it's transmitting on all of the um, channels of Wi-Fi. The next part the thing I need to do is connect up some proper antennas to these. So that would be my next job. I'll do it to one to show you how it's done, and then I obviously won't show you doing all the others because there's just no point. First job, let's get the antennas off these. One. Two. Three, four. Now what you need to do is you need to take your wire, roughly bend it into the centre. Not you don't want to, you know, do a full bend on it because you might end up snapping something inside. But now then you just clip it. Now these ones are covered in a plastic coat coating, which is standard. What you need to do, or what I do, is I take my um, wire, st uh, wire strippers, quickly snip it, and then some of it will come off in your hands. The rest you can bend down like so. Now I twist the rest of the outer co coax like that. So now we've got this bit that's covered by plastic still and a little bit hanging off the edge. Now you need to cut through this bit of plastic. I use a razor blade or a Stanley knife or whatever you've got at hand and I cut into it and pull it away. Turn, cut into it and pull it away. Turn, pull it away. Like that. Still not quite through it, so from another side just pull it. And once you've got it like this, um, once you've got it like this, you've got a bit of plastic, you can actually just pull it down and free up your inner core. 
Once you've done that on all four, you need to now tin them, which just means coat them with a layer of solder so that when it comes to connecting them to the actual transmitters, you're not having to heat either, either item up too much. So, so to do this, you just heat up the wire and place it on, place the soldering iron onto the wire. Oh, my soldering iron's not hot enough yet. I'll still keep going, like a rebel. Okay, I'll just do all these and I will zoom in on the last one so that I can show you for close up. Okay, and the last one, we go underneath the wire, or I try to, and I plunk solder on the top and leave a bit. And you'll see with this actual wire, which is multiple strands, it actually flows into all the pockets. There we go, done. Okay, now, to connect this to the actual transmitter, this part, the centre core, goes on to, let me find a pokey pokey device so I can point to it, this part, the centre core, goes on to the piece that we just desoldered which had the little bit of wire on originally and the smaller section goes on the negative pad which luckily for us is just here. A uh, negative you can find often there's just a pad left free as the negative often to do various bits and pieces so and a place this like this and then just touch it with the soldering iron to melt the two together there we go and now carefully as not to bend this piece off we bend our other tinned piece down one thing I didn't do was tin the pad which was really silly of me because I've done it on one and I just assumed I'd done it on them all so, as I've forgotten to tin the pad, I'm going to have to do it before we do anything else. So what I'll do is I'll touch the pad first and the wire at the same time and then bring my solder, solder down onto it. Don't want to get it too hot though. There we go. And that is now connected. I need to do that to the other four. So I'll get on with that now. Okay, this is our project box we're going to use, and it's just a clip open and close one, and the reason I've done that is because I want to have, be able to take in and out the battery without having to mess about. I did think about having it as a um, USB charge on it, but I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm going to bother with that. What we need to do is we need to measure the holes for the antennas to go out of. What I need to do first is get my ca digital calipers and check the circumference of that. Okay, so we need to make a hole that's 6.24 millimeters or 0.246 inches. Okay, the easiest way to do any sort of markings on here before drilling is obviously to measure it all out but the easiest way to actually get it all down on your uh, on your piece is if we shove some masking tape on the top now we've got a perfect way to be able to draw on it and also when we go to drill the holes it should actually hold um, the drill in place rather than slipping all over the place like it would do with normal plastic. Okay, so I've sorted all the holes here. This is going to be for the antennas and this side is for an LED and a switch which I will show you in a little while. Okay, so I managed to stuff everything in there as you can see. However, I hadn't factored in the size of the battery connector to the actual, uh, all of the other stuff. So I'm actually going to have to connect it to the outside, unfortunately. Um, if I did this again, obviously I'd use a bigger case, but I'm, I don't have a bigger case, so this is what I'm using. So I've drilled two holes in the side, and I will glue gun this when and if I ever get some glue gun sticks. 
So I'm going to put this in like this. Now it is incredibly difficult to get to anything, so this is going to be literally a, a surgeon kind of job today. I'm going to be doing some pinhole surgery with my soldering iron. Okay, I had to go away and come back. I needed to get a coffee because I knew this wasn't going to be an easy task. What I've decided to do is I will solder everything in and so on and I'll just probably speed it up as I do it. And then what I'll do is I will do a circuit diagram or a drawing or something to make it easier for you guys to follow along at home because the way this is, I could show you in great detail everything that goes on and you'd still have no clue because it's like spaghetti junction in there. Okay, so as I say, I'll probably speed it up now and then give you a nice graphic at the end to talk you through it. Okay, after recording the whole sequence of me soldering it all together and everything, I looked back through the footage, getting ready to edit it and so on, and it was all terrible. If my hand wasn't in the way, then it was off the screen. If you could see what I was doing, you couldn't really tell because there was a wire in the way, etc. So there's just no point in me actually putting it on. So I've decided to show you this calming, beautiful scenery instead. Now I will show you a graphical diagram. This will be much more help than watching me cover up wires with my hands and take it off screen. Okay, so if you pause it now and just take a screenshot, that should show you the basic setup of how these transmitters go together. It's fairly straightforward. And then all you need to do is put either a switch and an LED or just a switch. And the job's done. Okay, so the next part we need to do is connect this battery pack to the actual side of the case. And to do that I'm going to use my glue gun. And I finally got around to getting some more glue gun sticks. So I'm a very happy boy. Okay, so if I glue down this side, I don't want to use too much because I don't want it to look ugly any more so than having a battery sticking out the side. Okay. Hold that there for a sec. Yep, that'll do. Okay, now, unlike any other um, invention or project I've ever put together, I haven't actually been able to test this yet because of having to test it under certain circumstances where I only shut off my own uh, Wi-Fi signals and no one else's. So, tonight will be the first time I actually get to try that. But as you can see, it's not completely finished yet because we don't have any antennas. Now there's multiple antennas I could have chose from. However, I like these little dinky ones. Because I thought they'd look really pretty on the end of there. So, let's just have a look what they look like. Yeah, I think that looks nice. So, do you know what? I don't even know if this LED works yet. I haven't literally have not tested a single bit of it yet. Okay. So the final thing then is for us to test it. What you're seeing now is the channels. This is in the big screen, you're seeing the channels as it is according to my computer. And then you're seeing the channels as it is um, according to one of the tablets in our house. Now the way I've got around the legal issues with this device is I'm set up basically a Faraday cage which means I any signals I block within this room, uh, where the Wi-Fi, um, where the router is, that's the only place they get blocked. They, it won't block any further than my walls at the moment. So, 
what I'm going to do on the count of three is I'll turn it on and then we'll hopefully see a drop in all the signals on both screens. So three, two, um, let me try, three, two, one. And as you can see, both lots have completely dropped off. And now when I turn it back on again, three, two, one. Takes a few seconds because my computer then has to connect back to the system. We'll do it once more just to show that it wasn't just a fluke. For some reason my computer seems to be running very slowly but one, two, three and and one, two, three, back on. for everything to start back up again and there we go okay I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial I'm sorry that some bits were very flaky and didn't didn't work out as well as I planned it was human error com um, recording errors and it was just having fat hands and not no clue about where they are but I hope you enjoyed it anyway and if you did please like and subscribe and there'll be many more of these on the way thanks bye bye